Good morning, we'll get started. We got a slightly smaller crowd this week uh, due to Thanksgiving and sickness. My kids aren't here because they would have been sick. Um, so check your bulletin for our announcements. The one thing that's not in there is a Tuesday night Bible study that Tom does. We'll not be meeting this week. Uh, they have taken a break. Um, so we have communion next Sunday. Christmas in Ripley is on the 9th. If you are a trustee, you know you have a meeting on the 10th. You can be planning uh, what, your, what cookies you're going to make for our Carol's Cookies and Cards event. And then at the bottom there, we're going to have that collection box for Christmas cards as usual. Um, <clears throat> and then also there's a reminder that they're taking donations of canned pumpkin, evaporated milk, and other pie fillings for the food pantry for Christmas. Um, are there any other announcements that are not in the bulletin that we need to know about? Not? Take it away. Oh, well, that's right. There's a, yes. The video right David there. has a video for us. So today is the... Uh, you start? Today is, today is the um, Sunday School offering is going to Faith Comes by Hearing, and we've done an offering for military sticks before, but they have the um, Vision 2033 is a program that they're doing um, where they're attempting to get the Word of God out to all the world in all the different languages by the year 2033. Now, this isn't necessarily making Bibles. It's getting at least an audio version because I think the video tells you the percentage of the world that can't read. So they wouldn't get the word. If they got a Bible, they wouldn't know how to read it anyway. And some languages aren't even put into written language yet. So it's all about getting the word out or you know, the book of John or different parts of scripture and making movies that are verbatim from scripture and all kinds of digital things. So in this age of all the digital technology we have, they're able to, to spread the word verbally in a way that we never could before. And one of the things that they use for places that don't have a lot of access to any kind of um, technology, so, so to speak, they have proclaimers, and we've talked about it before. They're boxes that are either battery operated or they run on solar energy. So when these are going to, especially the sunny, like in Africa or some of those southern countries where they can have um, light all the time, they, some of them proclaim the word of God morning and night out of the churches in the small villages, and people hear it, and they, and that uplifts them for the day and then they have it again at night before they go to bed and it's just when you if you want to ever look and see what's learn more about it you get there are a lot more videos on their website which is faithcomesbyhearing.com or .org and um, there, you can look up videos on there that are amazing what the word of God is doing in these countries where people are hearing it for the first time in their own language so that's this video will explain a little bit about the vision 2033, and they have a $400,000 $400, $100, available that I don't know who donated it, but it's a matching uh, donation till the end of the month, and um, they're matching everything up to $400,000. So that's quite amazing. We could praise God for that, and so he'll play the video. <laughs> He made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. Having determined allotted periods and boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God. And perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is not far from each one of us.
Earth's population numbers in the billions and continues to grow. There are over 7,000 languages spoken around the world. 70% of all humanity live in oral communities and 50% cannot read at a functional level. Christ tells us that his gospel will be proclaimed throughout the entire world as a testimony to all nations before the end. But how? Alone, the monumental task of delivering God's word in the heart language of every people group on earth would not be possible. But we are not alone. Faith Comes by Hearing has partnered with the worldwide translation community in a movement to finish the task and ensure that everyone on earth has access to God's word in a format they can understand by the year 2033. We are committed to doing our part by recording scripture and creating listening programs for oral communities around the world. After two millennia, in an unprecedented time of unity within the body of Christ, we can finally see the Great Commission fulfilled in our generation. This movement cannot be stopped, and there is an opportunity for each one of us to be a part of it. This is it, the final sprint. Join the movement. Vision 2033. I just got shocked if they saw that look on my face. So, um, We're going to turn our hymnals now and sing uh, number 39, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. <laughs> Good morning. The scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 136. Psalm 136. I'm, I'm told as I've, I researched this that this psalm was often uh, read as a refrain. For instance, men would say the first part of the verse and the women would respond with the second part of the verse. 
The, the only problem is the women had a very easy part because it just keeps repeating itself throughout this psalm, for his steadfast love endures forever. So I wondered if we could try that. Psalm 136, and the men will, will say the first part of it, and you women, women will repeat the second part of it, for his steadfast love endures through forever. Psalm 136, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters. Excuse me. Verse 7, to him who made the great lights, his love endures forever. the sun to rule over the day, his love endures forever. the moon and stars to rule over the night, his love endures forever. to him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt his love endures forever. and brought Israel out from among them. His love endures forever. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm. His love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two. His love endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it. His love endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. His love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness. To him who struck down great kings his love endures forever. and killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, his love endures forever. and Og, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. and gave their land as a heritage, his love endures forever. a heritage to Israel, his servant. His love endures forever. It is he who remembered us in our lowest state his love endures forever. and rescued us from our foes. His love endures forever. He who gives food to all flesh. His love endures forever. And let's read verse 25 together. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. The word of the Lord. Turn to number 79. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, different song. Okay. What page? 79. I thought we clarified that. We found three different, a couple of different versions of this song. Yeah, I thought I'd... 179? No, just two, 79. Just 79. Oh, okay. 79. Sorry. Not 279, 79. 79. Giving her a run for her money this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
which ransomed all our race. In tenderness he sought us, from depths of sin he brought us, the way of life then taught us to him give thanks. Had I a thousand tongues to sing, the half could not be told of love so rich, so full and free of blessings manifold of grace that faileth never peace flowing like a river from God the glorious giver to him give thanks good okay We'll have a word of prayer, and then we're going to sing our worship songs. So Sayla will come up and play the worship songs for us. You get a break. Do we have any special prayer requests before we go to prayer? That's where you could pray for my wife. She goes to see the oncologist tomorrow in Roswell, and we'll find out what they're going to do. So you could pray for that and uh, that they'll have decided on the ways to go so it's, it'll be an easier decision. Uh, maybe only a couple of different directions to go. But um, be praying for that, that we can get that cleared up. Um, she still has to go on eventually to uh, Rochester to Strong's and uh, get evaluated for moving up the, for a liver transplant. So those are all things that you can be praying for for her. Anything else? For those of you who got the email about uh, Dan Sandberg, which is uh, Zach Sandberg, Maggie and Zach, it's Zach's dad, he ended up having his leg amputated below the knee this week. And if you would pray for him, he has diabetes, so it's been an issue where his leg wouldn't heal for the last few years from different surgeries. If you pray for him, I know that was heavy on Vera's heart. That's part of the reason she ran off the stage last week. <laughs> so things went well and they got up above where the infection was. So if you would just pray that as he goes through um, rehab and stuff to adjust to a prosthetic device eventually and all that, that would be wonderful. Thank you for your prayers. Anybody else? Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we're grateful for your love and concern for us. We're grateful that you are involved in our lives on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, always walking with us, always caring about us. You know all about us long before we ever realize what we'll be going through. We're thankful for that, that you are prepared and that you know and that you're working in our lives. We pray for Dan Sandberg and his, the loss of this part of his leg. It was a hard decision for him, but he, he wants to continue to live as long as he can. And Lord, we just ask you to work in his life to give him good healing and that the rest of the things that would happen, prosthetic and so on, would happen as quickly as they can. Thank you for the way you worked and uh, the peace you gave him about those things. We pray you just continue to work in that family. And we're grateful for your love for us and for understanding that sometimes uh, the things we go through are difficult for us. We pray for Anita as she goes through this uh, meeting with her oncologist. And uh, we pray that you'll guide us and direct us and to make the best choice possible and that they'll be able to do that quickly and take care of that for the time being. We pray that she'll tolerate all of those things well and that, uh, Lord, you would just bless her and give her strength and, as she goes through this experience. Lord, we're grateful for so many things as we've already sung several songs about that. But Lord, we know that all that we have is because of you. 
you created everything and even the things we eat and the things we enjoy together, the fellowship we can enjoy, the fact that we can take our baths and showers in our own homes and, and we can go on and on with lists of things that have happened because you have been gracious and have blessed us. Help us to be grateful always, but especially at this time of year that we just might really remember how you give to us and we'll praise you so much for it in Christ's name. Amen. I'm going to stand and sing our worship songs. We'll start with the Revelation song. Selah graciously came back uh, early just to play for us. No, that's not really true, but she decided she would play for us, which was <coughs> wonderful. So, what's that? Okay, and uh, in between, remember, is your opportunity to give thanks and praise to the Lord.
or thanks to give to God. Teachers have a huge effect. Yes, we're happy to have Carol back in our presence. She totters a little more. <laughs> so be ready to help her if she needs help, you know. But Tom we're... can hold on to both his women, his sister and his wife. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but we're glad to have her back and worshiping with us. Anybody else? Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? You get another chance after the next song then. Me. You. Oh. I just like to praise God for um, the children in our church as always. You know, I'm always praising God for the children. And if you'll notice there are very few here today. You don't realize how much of our congregation is our children. Um, until they're all gone, and that they're all, you know, visiting or whatever, and and um, there's a chunk of kids that fill up this church, and just praise God, that's our, the next generation that we are, you know, need to mentor and teach and bring up in the nurture of, of the Lord, and I just praise God for our church having lots of children. Certainly going to miss having them over here. <laughs> Even last week they sung so loud I didn't think I had to sing. They were doing a great job. So let's sing, give thanks, and you'll get another chance to praise the Lord. Let the 
thanks or praise. I'm glad to have uh, my son's family back and sail the plane and uh, just that they had a safe trip and a good time with the other side of the family. And it's nice <laughs> to have, we have two lovely families and uh, I just praise the Lord for that. I'm thankful for a wife who loves me, puts up with me. Sometimes that's more than you can imagine. But um, I try to take good care of her. Sometimes the pressure's on. Uh, but Lord's blessed us with 47 years so far, and we're expecting a few more, Lord willing, until he comes. Um, in the meantime, I'm also grateful for a church body that loves to sing. And I enjoy that very much up here that I don't have to sing solos every week, that all of you are singing with me, and I, I enjoy that more than you can imagine. Once in a while, I actually back off, and I don't sing for a few minutes just so I can hear you. And uh, I'm grateful for the way the Lord blesses. It's wonderful to be in a church of people who like to praise the Lord. Anybody else? Okay, then we're going to sing gratitude as our ending thank you for this month. We did it already. Okay. <laughs>
be seated. This time we're going to have Tom Scriven come. You know him, so I don't have to give him a great rendition or anything, but we love to have him come and preach and hear, enjoy this message. Oh, the joy of children. I don't know if any of you have gone to any Mennonite services at the Mennonite church. We've been invited several times and have gone to the church there in Northeast. And they have wall-to-wall -wall children. <laughs> Just children everywhere. My, my wife has one of the young men a 10-year-old, as one of her piano students and, and their family just, uh, just last week had their seventh little girl in their family. <clears throat> and uh, exciting to see another new life into their family. What is, what is God really like? Do you ever wonder what God is really like and what he thinks about things that are happening in our world, and what, what does God do all day? <laughs> of course, with him, there is no time, but he's given us time. And what are his thoughts and his actions and reactions? Who, who is he? Who is God? Who is God to you? It's significant because <clears throat> we are created in his likeness and we are created to worship him and he wants us to worship him and he delights in our worship and he's delighted even this morning as we have worshiped him. And now we come to look at his word and we're created in his likeness, and he instructs us. He wants us to be like him. It says in the New Testament, to be holy, for I am holy. That's not always easy to do. <clears throat> I like a quote that was, uh, if I can get it here, by uh, Dr. Ligon Duncan. And he says this, God never asks us to worship him. He never asks us to praise him and give him thanks without us understanding the reason why we ought to do that. God never asks us to worship him. He never asks us to praise him and give him thanks without us understanding the reason why we ought to do that. Psalm 136 is filled with countless reasons why God should be thanked. In the New Testament, Paul teaches us that because we've received Jesus Christ into our lives, we should be developing characteristics like God. We should be more holy. We should be more loving. We should be more kind. We should be more generous. We should be more gracious. We should be more like Jesus. And he wants us to be like that. We're all born into this broken, sinful world and somewhat self-centered. I mean, when we are first born, all we think about is ourself. We want to eat. We want to sleep. We want someone to change us, clean us up. And as we get older, uh, some of those things need to fall away and we need to begin thinking about others. And we need to be giving our lives to the Lord. If grumbling and ingratitude are evidences of selfishness, then thankful living is evidence of selfless living. 
And the apostle gives us many antidotes, many remedies for our self-consumed problem. In the scriptures, we're told of many afflictions for which thankfulness provides a cure and produces Christ-likeness. But before we look at them, just to, just to mention a little bit about Psalm 136, it's somewhat of a history lesson, isn't it, as we read through here. And just a reminder to the children of Israel of what God had done for them in the past. And every once in a while, maybe that's why we have Thanksgiving every year, but it, it certainly shouldn't be one day of the year. It should, certainly shouldn't be uh, just a week out of the year, but it should be a regular thing. But if nothing else, we're always reminded on the third Thursday in, in November to be thankful. And it's good to look back on the year. And some of you have had a very difficult year health-wise, financially maybe, the loss of a loved one, and it's been a very challenging year. And it's easy to think that the trials and troubles have outweighed the blessings, but God is still God. He's never changed, and he still wants us to be thankful and to give him thanks. And so Psalm 136 in particular is just a reminder of what God had done for the children of Israel and the truth of the fact that his love will never change and never end. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. And that's repeated 26 times. So as the children of Israel are reminded of that and as this as is perhaps sung, <clears throat> you know, in a Hebrew culture, the men would sing the first part and the ladies would respond, but his love endures forever. And all the things that the psalmist has gone through here, just beginning the, the uh, chapter with give thanks to the Lord and then ending it the same way, give thanks to the God of heaven because his love endures forever and then delineating the reasons for being thankful. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. To him alone who does great wonders. To him who by understanding made the heavens. And then the psalmist goes into some of the deeds that God has done in creation, in deliverance. He delivered them from the Egyptians. He led them through dry land as he parted Amazing. Just imagine a sea parting so that the sea bed was dry enough to walk through walls of water on each side. And after the children of Israel got on the other side and the Egyptians thought, we're going to follow them and we're going to overtake them. They get in the middle of the Red Sea and all of a sudden their whole world falls apart. <laughs> Who did that? Our God did that. Your God did that. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And so all these different ideas and, and uh, characteristics of God and acts of God are to be remembered with the idea that his steadfast love, his love endures Forever. Why does God do these wonderful things? Because he loves us with an everlasting love. And as we get into the New Testament then, uh, Paul realizes the problem with ourself and that we can easily become self-consumed. And so he speaks about afflictions that we have and thankfulness can provide a cure for many of them. Psalm 136 is filled with countless reasons why God should be thanked. And, and uh, then the Apostle Paul in the New Testament gives us the cure for some ailments. For instance, being thankful will, will cure 
the common uh, problem of anxiety. Listen to what Paul said to the Philippians. Very familiar verse. Do not be anxious about anything. Now that's pretty tough to do <laughs> when you've just heard the words cancer, when you're facing unexpected surgery, when you're just coming out of the hospital and wondering if you're going to regain your strength, when your life partner has passed away and gone to heaven and you're left to pick up and carry on in your life. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious about anything. It doesn't say that we aren't supposed to plan for the future. It doesn't say that there are not concerns in life, but we're not supposed to be to the point of distress and anxiety about anything, but the, the opposite is in everything by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds by Christ Jesus. I still remember Dr. Charles Stanley's preaching on that and saying, the peace of God would garrison you about like a fortress. The peace of God would protect you, your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So thankfulness will cure anxiety, being thankful. Being thankful will, will cure inflammation of the ego, or better known as pride. A thankful heart realizes that I don't really deserve all that I have. And we are, we are very blessed. I, I, think of, I think of some of the innocent victims that live in the Gaza Strip today. Their houses have been destroyed. Their loved, some of their loved ones have been murdered and killed. Uh, they're just trying to survive. They have no water, no electricity. The same has taken place in the Ukraine. And, and these people have done nothing, nothing to deserve this. You know, sometimes it's easy to think here in America that, well, those, those people, you know, they must have done something wrong or that's a different part of the country and that's just the way those people are. No, they're, they're human beings just like us. And they didn't deserve some of that. And we, we don't deserve what we've received. But listen to Paul describe himself, himself, the great Apostle Paul, the one who uh, so many people admire and uh, did admire in his day. But Paul says this about himself. I am, the, I am the least of the apostles. I'm the least of them. Unworthy to be even be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. There in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 9. But then he went on to say in Ephesians 3, 8, to me, though I am the very least of, so he's already said he's the least of the apostles. Now he's going to go on to say, to me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me. I'm the least of the apostles. I'm the least of the saints, he said. So being thankful will cure our problem of pride. And we struggle with it, don't we? Being thankful will cure worn out worship. Do you ever come to church maybe on a Sunday morning and you don't feel good or the weather's lousy, it's foggy and rainy or snowy and cold? And you just sort of come out of habit. Well, that's just what I do Sunday morning. And that's good. That's a good habit to be in. But being thankful will cure our, our mediocrity in worship. Feeling maybe God is boring. Church is monotonous. monotonous. The speaker is, very, is not interesting. Life is repetitious. But you can't worship God without a grateful heart. Some of the songs that we, I will lift up my hands, it just automatically, you just 
Do what the song tells you to do. You lift up your hands and praise him again and again, singing, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You can't worship God without a grateful heart. The psalmist said, let us come. Let us come into his presence. You imagine, I can only imagine what it'll be like when, when I see him. <laughs> Will I fall before him? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. But the psalmist says, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, Psalm 95. And then that familiar Psalm 100 in verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. So being thankful will cure, will cure our spirit of mediocrity and worn out worship. Being thankful will cure infectious discontent. Uh, symptoms such as incessant grumbling, contagious chatter virtually disappear when thanks living enter the life. Paul gives the church at Corinth a history lesson. And listen to what he says referring to the Old Testament believers. He says this in 1 Corinthians 10.10. 10. Whoops, I'll wait on that. 1 Corinthians 10.10. 10. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, referring to what happened in the Old Testament, nor grumble as some of, the, some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. So some of them grumbled and griped. They were destroyed by ser servants. Others grumbled and griped. They were destroyed by the destroyer. Who was the destroyer? Something to look up sometime. Now, Paul says these happened to them as an example. What is an example? <laughs> well, there are good examples and there are bad examples. Hopefully, parents are good examples, and they want you to follow their good example. Paul says these things happen to them as an example so that we wouldn't go down the same road and have to learn the same things by making the same mistakes. They were written as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, Paul said. Don't do that. Don't grumble and gripe against God. So being thankful will cure that. The great theologian Charles Schultz gave us these thoughts, and I can't read it that well from here. Lucy is talking to Charlie Brown, the great philosopher Lucy, and she said, you know what your problem is? The trouble with you is Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown looks back and says, no, and I don't want to know, leave me alone. And Charlie Brown walks away. And Lucy says, the whole trouble with you, Charlie Brown, is that you won't listen to what the whole trouble with you is. <laughs> and these things were written for our example in the Old Testament. So being thankful will cure uh, grumbling. <laughs> Being thankful will cure hardening of the heart. And Jesus, Jesus talked about this quite a bit. And somebody came and asked him, Lord, what is, the, what is the greatest commandment? And he said, you should love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your might and all of your strength, all of your being. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Being thankful will cure hardening of the heart. We cannot let the media, news stories, our culture squeeze us into the mold of having a cold heart and becoming indifferent to human life and human dignity and the needs of others. Jesus gave this moving story in 
and uh, in Matthew chapter 18 about about a, a servant. And Peter had just asked him, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother? Until seven times? And Peter thought he was bit, being a bit ma uh, magnanimous about that. Seven times I forgive this person. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then. And then I don't have to forgive him anymore. And Jesus said, no, Peter. Seventy times seven. Really? Seventy times seven? And, and then Jesus said this. Therefore, in verse 23 of, of Matthew 18, therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. This is a, a, an, an unbelievable amount. I mean, something you could never repay in your entire lifetime. 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him, forgave him that humongous debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him 10 bucks, just a pittance, who owed him just a hundred denarii, and seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But this man refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him this servant whom he, he had forgiven, and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailer until he should pay all of his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Being thankful will cure hardening of the heart. Jesus said the master forgave all that debt because you pleaded with him and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant. Well, being thankful will also not just cure hardening of the heart, but it will just cure general bacteria. Did you ever go to the doctor and you didn't feel good? And the doctor said, well, I think you have a virus, or I think, no, not a virus, because antibiotic won't work, work on a virus. I think you have the flu. And so I'm gonna give you an antibiotic. Um, not sure, you know, just take this, and a few days later you should begin feeling better. Well, sometimes we just feel lousy. <laughs> sometimes we're just feeling uh, sorry for ourselves. And beginning to be thankful will cure that general bacteria. Nothing in God's eyes is useless. And, de and uh, the Apostle Paul once again said, and whatever you do in word or, de or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Being thankful will cure just a general bacteria. And then this seventh one, being thankful will cure arthritic miseritis. You say, what in the world is miseritis? I think you made the word up. Maybe I did. But it's uh, the condition of being a miser. It's Chris, getting to, to Christmas time. Uh, usually sometime during Christmas, we watch, oh, it's, it's a wonderful life. We often watch the Christmas uh, uh, with Uncle Scrooge, the Christmas story with Uncle Scrooge. And Uncle Scrooge's problem was he was definitely a miser. He wasn't going to give Bob Cratchit any time off for Christmas. Uh, he was counting his money 
he kept Bob Cratchit in late uh, Christmas Eve, and uh, they barely had enough to get by, and Scrooge was a miser. And uh, that story points that out. Listen to what Paul wrote to the Corinthians. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, Paul wrote. But then in Luke chapter 6, Dr. Luke tells us this very simply when he gives his Sermon on the Mount, if you will, records it. And he says, give, give, and it will be given to you. That's, that's pretty simple, isn't it? You give, and it will be given to you. You're generous, and God will be generous with you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you again. In Bible times, they wore long robes for a number of reasons. But that one of the reasons was when they went out into the fields, they could catch grain in their long robe, and they could catch the overflow in their long robe, and they would wrap it up and tie it up and take that back to their home. But think of this. I was reminded of this passage in Isaiah chapter 58 once again where God is talking to the children of Israel through the prophet Isaiah about their fasts. The children of Israel were, were uh, instructed to fast from time to time. Now, we may fast for different reasons, medical reasons, or you may fast for spiritual reasons. But the children of Israel were uh, abusing the fast, and they were not fasting for the right motive. And so God says through the prophet in Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6, is not, this, is not this the fast that I chose to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked, to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh, then shall your, lay, your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring upon speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light arise in the darkness, and your gloom shall be as noonday, and the Lord will guide you continu continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose water do not fail, whose waters do not fail. Quite a promise that God gave to them. And, and we realize, we realize that God is more concerned about the motivation for giving than the amount given. You say, where does that come from? Well, there was a woman, a woman one day, a widow woman, who had absolutely no means. She had virtually nothing in her cupboards, but she gave her last two smallest coins in the offering. And Jesus was standing there with his, his disciples one day at the entrance of the temple, and he said to them, Hey, Peter, do you see that lady over there? Yeah. Pretty poor lady-looking lady, isn't she? Yeah. She just gave absolutely everything in her world that she has. Oh yeah, Jesus, how much did she give? Two tiny little coins. 
while these other people came in and they made a parade and they emptied their pockets perhaps and they clanged and they banged and they made noise putting their money in the offering and people were uh, impressed with how, and that Jesus made special effort to point out this widow woman who gave absolutely everything that she had. Now certainly the Lord is not asking us to give everything in our bank accounts. But it's a heart thing, isn't it? This woman loved much, and she gave everything that she had to Jesus. Being thankful will cure being a miser. And all of us struggle with that at times in our lives, I think. Being sure that we take care of ourselves, being sure that we have enough, Sometimes hearing of the needs of others and thinking, oh, God will supply somehow. Uh, I heard a story of a pastor who was speaking on stewardship. And uh, it was that time of year, it was getting toward the end of the year, and the church was behind financially. And uh, the pastor, toward the end of the message, said, you know, I don't know how this need is going to be met. I don't know how God is going to provide for us. And uh, at the end of the service, a couple were leaving, and a man turned to his wife, a man in the congregation, a member, said to his wife, you know, I'm glad that the pastor wasn't sure how this need was going to be met. He said, I'm glad that he he admitted that he didn't know where the funds were going to come from, because I was afraid that he was going to say that the funds were going to come from you, from the church. (laughs) Well, if the funds weren't going to come from God's people, where else were they going to come from? Being generous. I was listening to a message, and I actually heard it twice this this week. Maybe they repeated it because of Thanksgiving. But it was from Chip Ingram, and he was uh, at a, uh, a coffee shop and uh, doing some studying. He liked to be out with people. And he got this idea, and he was speaking on generosity. And uh, he, uh, he decided that he would, he would go out and meet some people and take a little survey. And so he went out, and he said, to individuals, he said, I don't want anything from you, no money. I, he says, I'm not selling anything. I just have one question I'd like to ask you. I'm doing a survey. Will you answer one, just one question? And they, most people said, sure. Okay, and it's just a yes or no answer. Uh, do you feel like you are a generous person? Yes or no? He said, eight out of ten people answered yes at a shopping mall. Whether or not they were is debatable. But um, he went on to speak of generosity in his life. And uh, being thankful will also cure spastic tongue disease. You know what spastic tongue disease is? Well, uh, it's, it's using deceitful words or empty or destructive words. It's tearing down another person. And we can chart a different course from the world with words of thankfulness. And Paul said, bearing with one another, and sometimes bearing with one another, involves more work than than humanly possible. So we call upon God to give me patience. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, Forgive them. Forgive them. You have a complaint against someone else? Just ask God to give you forgiveness in your heart. Forgive them. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must, you also must forgive, Paul said. Paul said that. So forgiveness. Being thankful will cure even confusion of convictions. Confusion of convictions. If a believer is in doubt about doing a certain thing, a good test is to ask the question, 
this question, can I honestly thank God for this? If I do this, is it something I can ask God to help me with and thank him for that? It will cure confusion of convictions. And last, living thankful is really a key indicator of my spiritual health. Paul, Paul goes on to uh, speak of this more. But why did he speak about this aspect often? Maybe, maybe because he realized that the selfish virus could overtake a person, a believer, and they won't even know it. <laughs> well, it's Thanksgiving time, it's Christmas time, and I give to this, and I give extra to the church. And so, yeah, I think I'm a pretty generous person. But then when I measure myself against Jesus, against the Apostle Paul, against the scriptures, am I really a generous person? And Paul, Paul connects love and harmony and peace and unity and teaching and encouragement and wisdom and singing together with the common ingredients of thankfulness. Listen to what he wrote to the church at Colossae, in Colossians chapter 3, and beginning with verse 14, and above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Isn't that an amazing verse? Love binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ Rule then in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. But that's not all. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with, there's the word again, thankfulness in your hearts to God, and whatever you do in word or de deed or, or, or do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So being thankful is a key ind indicator of our spiritual lives. Would you consider yourself a generous person? Chip Ingram went on to say, when, when I pass from this life, there are a number of things that I hope to be remembered for, but I hope people will remember me for being a generous person and a kind person, generous and kind. The great preacher Charles Spurgeon wrote this, about Psalm 136, give thanks to the Lord. The exhortation is intensely earnest. The psalmist pleads with the Lord's people with this, this uh, imperative, this command, oh, give thanks to the Lord. It's repeated three times. Thanks are the least that we can offer, and these we ought freely to offer, to give. The inspired writer, the psalmist, calls us to praise Jehovah for all of his goodness to us and all of the greatness of his power in blessing his chosen. For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Essentially, Spurgeon goes on to say, he is goodness itself. Practically, all that God does is good. Relatively, he is good to his creatures let us thank him that we have seen, proved, and tasted that he is good. He is good beyond all others. Indeed, he, is, he alone is good in the highest sense. He is the source of good, the good of all good, the sustainer of good, the perfecter of good, the rewarder of good. For this, he deserves the constant gratitude of his people. End quote. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Father, 
At times we need to ask you to forgive us because we are not always thankful and we have complained and we have been very self-consumed. And you're a gracious God, not, not rewarding us according to our iniquities, but instead giving us grace above grace. And we thank you for that. Help us to be more like Jesus. Amen. Are you going to play the last song for us? Not used to having two pianists, you know. If you're going to use your hymn book, you can turn to number 40. We gather together. He chastens and hastens his will to make known The wicked oppressing now cease from distressing Sing praises to his name, he forgets not his own Beside us to guide us, our God with us joining Ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning. The Lord was at our side. All glory be thine. We all do extol thee, the leader triumphant. And pray that thou still our defender wilt be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation. Thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. Gracious Father, we're thankful for a month of just being reminded of all that you've done for us. Help us to be ever conscious and aware that all of our blessings come from your hand. We're thankful for your love, for it endures forever. We know that as your children, we are yours, not just now, but forevermore. We praise you for that. Send us off being reminded, thankful for all that you do, for the people you bring into our life, for the opportunities, for the way you care for our needs, and so much more. We praise you, Lord, in Christ's name. Amen.